Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg here in Las Vegas. Uh, morning, Hank. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Working a lot. Had a good conversation uh, with Jimmy Johnson since we last spoke. I called to congratulate him on the induction into the hall and uh, talked a little bit with him about the Super Bowl. I have a theory about the game that he agreed with, actually. I... Uh, Compared this game with uh, with his game against Buffalo and uh, with the uh, Giants game against Buffalo, when Buffalo had the number one offense uh, in the league, and uh, I think Andy Reid could wind up uh, a, light, a lot like Mark, Mark Levy, make the Hall of Fame without ever winning a Super Bowl game, <laughs> getting there a couple of times. Yeah, that's very possible. Um, yeah. What's that? It's very possible. Well, uh, I think if you look back to what uh, what the Giants did, uh, Bill Parcells and uh, uh, you know was the coach of the Giants then, and he had Belichick with him, and they moved LT all over the field, and they really confused Kelly, and they shut him down. This was the highest scoring team in the league. They scored 19 points in the game. And the Giants didn't have Sims in that game. Remember, they had, uh, Sims was hurt, so they had a backup quarterback playing. Uh, and, uh, they just ran Otis Anderson in the game and he ran for over 100 yards and he caught a touchdown pass. And, uh, Kelly was a little bit confused in the game, and they couldn't score. Shut him down. Jimmy shut him down, too. And uh, here you have a a team that, over the whole season, uh, I think they scored, uh, oh, you know, 30 points, something like 11 times. Uh, I guess that's why people like the over in the game. But if you look, Carter you'll see that when they went on the road and played the two, two of the top defensive teams, which were Chicago and New England, uh, they didn't score over 26. They scored 26 once and 23 another time. Um, so that's something to consider when you're looking at the point total. And you're looking at a team in San Francisco that's going to run the ball the whole game. Yeah, well, that does eat the clock, but they, they've they also been a high-scoring club, too. I mean, they put up a lot of points also. I see this total just going up, up, up. I mean, it started at 52. It's up to 54 and a half, um, and it just doesn't seem to be stopping. There has to be a limit. I mean, unless, you're, unless everybody just thinks the game's going to be in the 30s, both teams in the 30s, or 35-25 or something like that, I mean, this is a big number. I mean, you're not giving the defenses any credit at all by keep putting up a number like this. People always bet the over in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, they and do. they're usually wrong. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, a couple of games that went under that people thought were going over. When uh, Denver uh, played in the game, what was the score, 26-13? It was low, yeah. It was a low-scoring game. Yeah, it's, uh, it does get, you know, two weeks is kind of, hey, by the way, you're all, you're usually at the Super Bowls. You're not going this year? I haven't been there in years. I, I haven't been there, uh, since I started getting dialysis. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I didn't, and when I moved here last year, I didn't go to the Super Bowl. And, uh, I've been here for some, so I, I had a radio show. When I went every year, and I started out, I was the one of the three guys who started Media Row, so I had to go every year. Uh, I stopped going a few years ago. Speaking of Super Bowl, uh, how long do you think it'll be before Vegas gets a Super Bowl? They've got one, I think, coming up. Now they're going to get one. You got new stadiums in, in L.A.? And you got a new stadium here in Vegas. I'm sure they're going to try to promote those stadiums. Uh, no, I think they're going to get it uh, four years from now. Okay. 
I think that's pretty much of a done deal. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, got some good basketball results last night. The games have been really good. Got some big games this week. This today we've got huge games as well. Um, Notre Dame, Syracuse is going to be a good one. Xavier, Georgetown, Louisville, Georgia. You're not interested in why I think that the this game is going to be like the Buffalo game was. Yeah, if you have more to say, I just didn't You're want to let that slide. <laughs> well, sometimes Hank, you don't want to give away too much on the air. I I didn't want to press you on it. Well, I think that uh, San Francisco's got the great defense. And Mahomes hasn't faced a defense like that this year. It's, you know, the one time that uh, San Francisco faced a real good defense and they turned the quarterback loose was in New Orleans when they scored a lot of points. But this is a different San Francisco team now. You know, throughout the playoffs, they've been a different team in that they've taken the ball out of Garoppolo's hands and they decided to be a running team. I'm going to tell you something that I like uh, as far as props go, and I know the props come out Thursday night, but who's going to score first? And I think that Kansas City starts off slow in games, and San Francisco, he's going to come up with something, and he's not going to use the guy who threw, who ran for 200, Mr. Mustard, who ran for 200 yards, but it's either going to be one of the obscure running backs or a guy like Debo or perhaps the third tight end, born, where you'll get a price. Yeah, that won't be Kittle. That'll, that'll be a big price. And I guess Coleman's probably, I, I would say Coleman's not playing. Would you agree? He's playing. Coleman's help, he's healthy with the shoulder? They say he's going to play. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, they, well, that would be, uh, that's a big boost because he's a very, uh, he's had a good year. He's very quick, very fast. Um, he's been getting treatment, and, uh, and uh, by the way, Kansas City doesn't have anybody on their injury report. Well, that's good. They, both teams go in there reasonably healthy. That gives you, gives a, that's good. That's real good. Well, if, if uh, Coleman goes, they're totally healthy. They don't have any injuries. And they've made the change in the defensive backfield, which has been cons- uh, significant. What else? Uh, it, in, any he other? He he has a little bit of a kicking problem, I think, so. Any other any other uh, props you like in the in the game? Uh, well, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't think that uh, Mahomes is. You know, you know they don't have a running game. Kansas City, Mahomes probably be their leading rusher. You probably which he has been. Yes, he has. He has over a hundred yards rushing in the postseason. Um, and, uh, San Francisco, uh, you know, they just, uh, you know, I just think San Francisco is going to come up with a defense that's going to confuse him. He's still a second year guy. And, uh, they have, they, the top, like I said, if you look at their top two, uh, when they played the top two defenses on a road, they didn't score that much. They were in the twenties, low twenties in one game. And if San Francisco gets ahead in the game, um, you know, they're just going to run the ball and eat up the clock. Yeah. You know, I've been to Super Bowls. Uh, I've been to most of them. I stopped going, I guess, uh, after I stopped working for ESPN. Uh, I used to go for ESPN every year after I, my radio show. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've seen some pretty lousy games in Super Bowls. There have been a lot of bad Super Bowl games. There have been very few good ones. Uh, I was asked yesterday, uh, I'm going to be on Beeson on Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, Matt was asking me, uh, 
about memorable Super Bowl games she's going to want to talk to me about. The worst Super Bowl game I ever saw was Super Bowl V that was played in Miami. I was working as a spotter for uh, the radio uh, broadcast, and that was the game where Baltimore kicked a field goal with five seconds left to beat Dallas. Remember when Dallas... uh, when the wide receiver for Dallas, Jackie Smith, dropped the pass in the end zone. No, oh, I do remember, and yeah. Ball, and Baltimore went on. There were over 20 penalties in the game. <laughs> it was a, one of the worst played games in the history of Super Bowls. It was terrible. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of games that uh, just weren't that well played. They were very one-sided. You know, there was the famous game where they thought that Kansas City – where Len Dawson was being investigated for his connection with bookmakers. And yeah, I remember that. Everybody bet, everybody bet against Kansas City, and they went out and won easily against, you know, won that game easily. The Dolphins' Super Bowl win over, uh, this is another example, where uh, the Dolphins' defense, Manny Fernandez, uh Tackled Billy, uh, or rushed Billy Kilmer all day long. He had 17 unassisted tackles in the game. <laughs> and Jake Gott had two interceptions. Uh, that's the other, uh, prop I like. Under interceptions in the game. Under four and a half. Because one side's not going to throw the ball. That, that's a good prop. I like that one. That's a good one. I remember the. But, uh, Miami in that game. Greasy threw the ball 10 times. <laughs> the only score that Washington had was off the Gary O'Yuprimian uh, <laughs> gap when, yeah. when he couldn't he couldn't kick and uh, he picked up the ball and tried to throw it. Otherwise, it would have been a 14 to nothing game. You've had teams that really freeze offensively in this game. As good as Buffalo was offensively, and in three of their Super Bowl years, they were either first, second, or third in total offense, and they got shut down. Three times in a row. Once by Dallas, once by the Giants, and uh, you know, Jeff Hostetler was the quarterback for the well, Giants in the game that they won. What about, to 19. What about last year's Super Bowl? <laughs> the Patriots and the Rams. I mean, that was... Yeah. That wasn't very good either. <laughs> Well, you know, Peyton Manning's win, you know, they didn't score much. When they play- the one exception was the year that uh, San Francisco went nuts in the game against Cincinnati when the game was played in Miami. Remember, remember the uh, Super Bowl where um, I saw you on Radio Row, Row in Miami and it rained like hell during the game. It was a torrential downpour. And there was Chicago, I think it was Chicago against uh, um, in. Chicago against Indianapolis? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, yep, Rex Gross. You know where the temperature was in Miami last night? No. Below freezing. No, come on, really? Holy shit. Yep. Wow, that's that, that's unusual, period. I mean, it never gets that cold down there. But, uh, yep. wow. Wow. Um, basketball, there's a lot of games this week, starting tonight. Got, uh, several games that are good. Watch George Mason. Uh, they're playing Massachusetts. They're a good team. Uh, they have been for the last couple of years. Nobody ever talks about them. No, 12 and 6 on the Auburn, uh, Duke came back last night, as, uh, we said they would. Uh, against Miami. Um, and Seton Hall Providence is a good game up north. I'll tell you a team to keep an eye on, uh, is Rutgers. And they're getting a few points against, uh, Iowa tonight. Iowa's at home. Rutgers is the real deal. They haven't had a good team in years. And, uh, they're good. They're, they're a tournament team this year. They're playing really well. The, uh, the big, the, I, I looked at that game. I really liked Rutgers in the game, but I stayed away from it because of the way the Big Ten home teams have been covering. I just said, I'll, I'll pass on it. 
and uh, and I haven't made a bet on it. Um, well, there have been some big numbers. Like uh, last night, there was a game where uh, where a dog came out of Illinois, I think it was, uh, one straight up over Purdue. Yeah, you're right. Seton Hall plays Providence tonight. There's your, there's that. I think that's a team you talk about all the time. That line opened nine and a half. It's down to uh, eight and a half, nine. Providence is pretty sneaky. They can, uh, they can cause you trouble. Yeah. yeah, Seton Hall is playing pretty well right now. I'll tell you an interesting game is Creighton and DePaul. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a good a, game. Very good game. Texas Tech, by the way, is not playing well right now. They were a good team last year. Uh, but they're on a losing streak. And uh, Kentucky, uh, I think they, I know, Kentucky is kind of up and down. Um, Kansas Wallop, Kansas State. Kansas State's really bad. They can't score. The um, ECU uh, played St. Joe's. St. Joe's is not too good. Uh and uh, Texas A&M's got a nice team, too. They can play defense. When was the last time you saw North Carolina with a losing record? They're 8-9 and nine on the season, playing absolutely terrible. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember. No, I can't either. Not since Troy Williams has been there. And, no. of course, be, before him, you had a guy who never lost, Dean Smith. Yeah, that's, a, that's really a turnaround for that team. Very unusual. Um. Hmm. He doesn't have any players. Yeah, and that's really unusual because they do such a great recruiting job. Normally, they're stacked, but this year they have their problems. Yep. Yep. Uh, Auburn's fifteen and two on the season. They did lose a couple recently, but uh, they're eleven point favorites. They, they lost two games last week. That's right. They're eleven point favorite tonight against at home against South Carolina. Yeah, the South really... Carolina is on a pretty good run right now. I think they beat Kentucky. They played well. Played well. This Frank really... Martin is a good coach. Well, this is the march to the. Uh, you know, this is, gets serious now. You get it. You're in. We're in the. We're deep into the conference games now, and we're heading to March Madness in five weeks, six weeks. It'll be crazy. It's going to be exciting, the game. And uh, we'll get the Super Bowl, and we're going to talk about that for the next 10 days. Anything else? There must be uh, the middle of the season because Leonardo is starting to show up on ESPN. Oh, he is? Okay. Boy, is he annoying. <laughs> 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 but, uh, and Saturday's a big day of racing at Gulfstream. Uh, they have two big races, a million-dollar turf race and uh, $3 million Pegasus. Uh, the favorite in the race will uh, be Richard Mandela's horse, uh, Omaha Beach. Uh, they've got a, a field of 12 horses going. And uh, it'll be a big day of racing So uh, for that. Uh, Baffert has another big three-year-old who, he's th- who they're talking about. Uh, um, so I think his name is Winchester or something like that. Anyway, so they're starting to look at the three-year-olds. And, uh, of course, uh, contrary to what was in the Review Journal, you can bet Kentucky Derby Futures now. <laughs> Hopefully they'll print a retraction, but I'm sure they haven't yet. No, they haven't. Okay. Well, the racing uh, column runs Friday, so I'm curious to see if he writes about his mistake. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, one of the props that uh, people are interested in, who's going to be the MVP, is it possible that there'll be a defensive player who wins the MVP this year? Uh, I think 29 times the quarterback has been the MVP, and seven times it's been a running back. And uh, it's, it's, it's rarely a defensive player. I think there have only been four defensive players who have uh, won the MVP in the Super Bowl. 
Well, I guess one of them was Jake. One of them was Jake Scott. And it should have been Manny. Manny was the best player in that game with his 17 tackles. Wow. If San Francisco were to win this game and they don't throw the ball, we definitely could have a running back or defensive player. That's for sure because of their style. Their style well, you could play. also have a defensive player. Uh, you know, if one of them has four, three or four sacks in the game or something like that. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun, Hank. Um, uh, we'll talk again on Friday. Have a good week. Okay, Hank. Thanks, Hank. You too, Jim. Bye, bye. Thank you. All right, everybody, go to jimfice.com. It's kind of a you know it's funny. It's a dry. It feels like a dry spell now that there's no football to talk about. You know the sixteen games, the college games, et cetera, et cetera. But when you really get into the college basketball season, a lot of money to be made. Uh, you know, I don't want to jinx myself, but I'm on a 13-2 and two run right now in college hoops. Of course, like I said, I don't want to jinx myself. Anytime you start, <laughs> it seems like every time you start saying you're doing well, something happens. But um, I have five games posted for tonight in college hoops, uh, one NBA game, and... Um, I haven't posted anything yet for the football, but I'm still working on it. Uh, I, honestly, it's a tough it's a tough game to analyze. There's two styles, um, and um, then of course the issue that I have with the game is where the game is being played. It is outdoors. It is in an area where you can get weather at any moment. You can you you can have a perfectly good week ahead and then all of a sudden the storm pops up and the wind and the rain comes in and I've been there for a couple of those games when it happens and it's not real pleasant to play in toll keeps going up and if we get any kind of weather that's not going to make it Um, so I'm going to wait a little while on that I want to make I want to make bets on the game but I want to make you know smart bets I don't want to be just throwing numbers out there So anyway, go to JimFice.com for Hank's plays, my plays, and uh, we'll have basketball up there, and we'll eventually put up some football stuff. Thanks, guys.